Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And your biggest question right now is probably, Blake, why are you using Photoshop CS5 to edit photos today? And in reality, I'm not using Photoshop CS5 to edit photos today. What I want to show you is uh, a little color theory course on how the interface that you choose in Photoshop could be affecting your images. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the interface in Photoshop. So in Photoshop CC, you can go to Edit Preferences, and in Preferences, you can go to Interface. And the interface, you can change the color as you see fit. Now, normally, I work in this interface. If you ever watch any of my YouTube tutorials, you'll see that I'm in this interface predominantly. But what happens if you change the interface, and how does that affect your editing process? That was a question that I asked myself the other day. I was like, okay, knowing what I know about the basics of color theory, what happens if I edit images using this interface? And what happens if I edit the exact same image, maybe the next day, with the same principles in mind using this interface? So I created a series of experiments here, and I want to show you the color theory behind it before I get into the actual experimentation process that I went through to get to this point. So what you're looking at right now is on the left hand side, you're looking at the lightest color of the interface that Photoshop has to offer on the right hand side, you're looking at the darkest interface and inside you're going to see a swatch. Now that swatch is the exact same color on both sides. However, look at what happens to the swatch on the left hand side. That purple swatch looks dull and muted, but on the right hand side, that purple swatch looks like a little bit more vibrant, maybe even lighter. All right, now let's, this is kind of like a Rorschach test. So as I go through these, you're gonna see how the color, even though that swatch in the middle is the exact same, look at what happens to that color when you're, whether you're looking at it on light or dark. Okay, so here's the next one. This is a very mild shade of yellow, almost to the point that it's white. On the left-hand side, it looks very much yellow. On the right-hand side, it almost appears white. So you see the shocking difference there. Now editing your photos, will this have some influence on the maybe the hue, saturation, and lightness that you choose? That was the experiment that I wanted to go for. So then looking here, we have a very bright cyan swatch. On the left-hand side, it looks kind of dull, almost muted a little bit. On the right-hand side, very vibrant and light. Now we have a, like a forest green, all right, Some similar to what you might find in trees on your images. On the left-hand side, it looks rather dark, dull, muted. The right-hand side, a little bit more vibrant, much lighter than it does on the left-hand side. Now I assure you, these are the exact same colors. This color of green is the exact same color of this color green. If we brought it into Photoshop and we did a test, these would be the exact same. Now watch it on red. So here on red, this is the most purest form of red. This is the highest saturation of red. And, you know, looking at that Rorschach test idea, you kind of have to close your eyes and just open them real quick and look back and forth and see what color happens here. So on the left hand side, that that red appears very dark on the right hand side, uh, very bright, very vibrant, almost like a completely different shade on the le right hand side. It looks like it could almost be like an orangish, like a red orange color where on the left hand side, it's more red. Let's do the same thing with blue, blue, very much the same thing. Right hand side, very light looking very bright, very saturated on the left hand side, a little less saturated, almost like it could use a little bit more saturation, even though that is the purest form of saturation there. Let's do something a little different. This is pure white. So this is pure white on gray. This is pure white on that dark gray. Now on this light gray, that pure white almost doesn't look pure white. It almost looks like it's a mild shade of gray, but on the right hand side, it's very much white. Let's do that with black. So this, this is interesting because the black on the left hand side is very dark. It's almost a vibrant black, which is kind of opposite from all the other things that we discussed. And on the right hand side, you're going to see that that black almost appears gray, like a mild gray. So you see these little nuances in color theory could play a major role in your editing process. So what I did was last night, uh, prior to closing down shop, I edited four different photographs on the light version of Photoshop. And then this morning, I chose the exact same editing process using the same editing elements, but did it on dark. 
So I wanted to give myself some time in between. I didn't want to just edit from one and then edit to the other one because what I really wanted was, was that time uh, between each one. So the process was simple. Here's your photograph, whether it's an HDR image or not, that has been tone mapped in Photomatics. Only modify tone and color and also color grading in the end. So the things I targeted first was tone with the curves. Second was color with hue saturation. And the third was color grading. Here's an image of a one room schoolhouse that is actually in Kansas. Beautiful place to shoot the tall grass national prairie. And this was on the light Photoshop interface. I edited the exact same image using the same principles on the dark version. Notice how my color changed dramatically, especially in the blues in the sky. Here it's a little bit more cyan. Here it's a little bit darker. So my reds popped out a little bit more on dark. My reds are a little bit more muted on light. Look at the yellows in the, uh, in the foliage. A little bit more vibrant on the dark. A little bit lighter on the light one. Let's move forward. So here's a waterfall. This is taken in Maine. Uh, Cascade Falls in Maine. Beautiful place to shoot. So single exposure was not tone mapped. I just brought it into the light version of Photoshop, light interface, and then the dark interface. Notice how things are dramatically different. Now, you could, there are some variables here that you could take into consideration. The fact that I uh, edited on a different day, uh, that my mood could have played in there. But predominantly, I had the idea in mind that I was only going to edit for tone and color and then color grading. So with those principles in mind, with those light and dark principles, you'll see even if we take this dark image and put it on the light interface, there's some editing there that I probably wouldn't have done, but it looks good on the dark one. We'll go into that in a second here after I go through the rest of these images. Cannon Beach, Oregon, Haystack Rock on light, on dark. Very different color choices happened here. So the saturation here is a little muted, and here it's a little bit more saturated. And the last one, I want to do an interior shot. This was also in the Tallgrass National Prairie in the barn. This is on light. This is on dark. This is on light. This is on dark. So let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop and see uh, what the dark one looks like on light and what the light one looks like on dark with a couple of these. All right, so looking at that waterfall picture, this was the light version. So this was done on the light interface, is what that means. And this one was done on the dark interface. I'll just change it by going down here. So this one was on the dark interface. It looks, looks natural, looks like it fits there. Now let's go to edit, go to preferences, and go to interface, and change that interface to something light. So now you can see if I was editing this on a light interface, there's some choices I probably would not have made here. Uh, the saturation looks a little bit bright. Again, we can go to edit preferences, change that interface back to dark. And it seems like that saturation is natural, but on the light, it doesn't seem so natural. So if we go ahead and switch, so let's switch to this one. This is our light version. Looks good on the light. Go to edit, go to preferences, interface, change it to black. Look at the differences there. It looks like the saturation needs to go up a little bit more. All right. Changing it back, saturation looks like it's all right. Now, I usually prefer to edit on this interface or sometimes even looking at this interface. Now, these are the extreme interfaces that you can see that there's a definite difference in how our image looks in the end. Let's go ahead and look at another example. So we've got that barn picture on the light interface and we'll go into the interface options here and change this to the dark interface. And you can see on the dark interface, uh, the and background here looks like the muted whites. On here, those whites look like they're standing out a little bit more. All right, now let's go ahead and change that over to the other image. On dark, now on dark, our lights look pretty light here. But if we go to that other preferences and go to our interface, change that to dark, looks like it should be there. You know, like the, the lights look good there. Like they aren't too light. Here they look like they might be a little too light. So really what I want to show you here is not necessarily that the interface that you're using might be a bad interface, but just consider that the interface that you're working on and how dark that this back interface might appear could be affecting your judgment 
on how saturated your colors look, which in turn will play out on how you print. So if you print, you say, this looks nothing like it does on my computer. Well, it might not be that your monitor isn't calibrated. It might be that what you're holding that print up against, if it's a white mat and you're working on what looks like a gray mat here or a dark gray mat here, that image is going to look different for you. So keep that stuff in consideration. Always keep that stuff in consideration that your interface could very well be playing because of the principles of color theory, like we discussed earlier, could be playing a very important role in how your final images look. Again, my name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. If you like this tutorial, please share it, send it to somebody else that you might have a battle with about color theory. And this, this actually came about because when I was looking at Photoshop CC and the ability to change all of the interfaces, I mentioned it in one of my what's new tutorials on Photoshop and somebody um, made a really rude comment about something that I said about color theory. And uh, so I had to prove that. You know, that was actually a few years ago, but this is my proof that the interface that you choose could very well be an influence on the decisions that you make in your final image. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time.